What's up? What's up? It's your girl, Shelly Shell, man. Where y'all been? Where y'all been? I miss y'all so much. Um, this is a very special, uh, Curious Season recap uh, edition of Let's Talk Radio. But also, what's so important about uh, this month in particular is that it's our third year anniversary. September 21st, 2017, we started this platform and um, it's been more than I could even imagine. It's been everything and more. And uh, I just want to appreciate, I want to say how much I appreciate y'all for the support and the love and just the tribe we've built. You know what I mean? It's, it's been so much, especially this year. So it's, it, I, I thank you so much. Happy anniversary to Let's Talk Radio and to y'all. And um, and let's get into this Curious Season recap, man. Today, you already know. Let me get back to my script. You know, let me say it the way y'all like it. You already know. I don't which, which camera is the camera photos because you know this this not where I usually sit. This is all new. Um, <laughs> this you already know. Thursday is my favorite day. I don't care about Monday. I don't care about Tuesday. Ain't no humping on Wednesday. Thursday is the only day I care about because of y'all. And every week, not this year though, but when we was <laughs> when we was not COVIDed, uh, COVID. <laughs> when we wasn't COVIDed, every week we have a different guest host from our community. And we get to spread visibility, and that's what I love about it. And today, we have two cast members and the creator uh, via Skype of Quirious. So please welcome, give a Last Talk Radio welcome to Cole and BJ. Hey! Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm going to get sound effects. Watch. I'm going to get it together. Because <laughs> uh, y'all deserve a round of applause. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. How y'all feeling? Good, blessed, and highly favored. Okay, hey, ma'am. Okay. BBQ. Black, okay. blessed, and queer. Okay. We are here. That's what I'm talking about. I feel like everybody, everybody got their unemployment checks and everybody <laughs> happy. <laughs> and I just, I'm, just I'm excited for everybody right now, right? Um, how's y'all week? How's y'all week going? Let's just start with the week. We're going to go into a lot more. Let's start with the week. Do you want to start? Come. Um, Wow, okay, so, wow, this week, I'm actually really elated this week. I'm, like, on a high on cloud nine. Um, So I have so much going on with, um, you know, just my personal chef business that's really taken off. So this week I had the opportunity, and I was blessed enough to hire a team of all my friends um, to put on my website and commercial shoot, and it felt really great to see all of my friends in their element and to be blessed enough to do it and to not do it at a discounted rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. To do it and to do it right. 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 That's what I'm talking about. It felt good. So my application... Uh, must have gotten lost in the. <laughs> <laughs> I love so it. clearly, I'm not checking the right email. Uh, no, I'm just saying. But I'm so happy that you're doing that, and I can't wait to support you in that. And 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 you I can't know. wait. Y'all gonna know. Y'all gonna trust me. You, your invite coming for the special, special, special situation. That's what I'll be waiting on. Okay. Special, 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 special situation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and how did you get? Um, how did you start that journey? Um, wow. Um, so I ain't gonna cap. I ain't gonna okay. cap no on I ain't gonna cap for y'all. No when I went vegan six years ago, it was for the clout. It was cause it was different. It was oh it was cause it was like when nobody else vegan, you right. know? Right. So it's like, okay, she's vegan, that's cute, you right. know. Um, but after that I started to realize that you could be vegan and unhealthy. Mm. And still sad, yeah. and still depressed, and still anxious. Duh. Okay, so first of all, vegan is not uh it don't chicken mean substitutes. Health. It's not all the chicken nugget substitutes you can find right, in Right, because I tried that. I yeah, tried that. it's not. That's not vegan. Like, right. People don't it's understand. It's not. Chicken. I think that, and, and from becoming a vegan chef and really honing in on herbalism and, and health as the forefront, I've started to realize that it really doesn't matter if you're eating meat or not. It's what you're doing to keep your body healthy. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And I think the biggest thing for us as a, as a society is to reduce our consumption of processed food. Yeah. Not being vegan or pescatarian or vegetarian or anything, but reducing processed foods. It's only been within the last 55 years that we've actually had the convenience of having processed foods at our fingertips. Yeah. Before that, everybody ate at home. You ate whole foods, whole vegetables, and, you know, meat. But there wasn't this overconsumption because it wasn't the convenience of getting you the meat in five seconds. Yeah. Go off. You know? Go, okay. Go sure. off. <laughs> That's facts, though. If you go to the grocery store and most of your groceries come from the middle aisles, and you just, you're not doing it right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you need to be on the outskirts, not the bakery section either, because I know the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, not the bakery section. I live at the bakery On the too, other so side of where the produce is. All the cupcakes. Is where you need to be. <laughs> it yeah. Is, it's true, and I think especially now, like, highlighting us being black, 
queer um, and trying to take control of this revolution, I think that taking control of our bodies is a very big revolution because as we have this attack on our respiratory systems, on our communication, on our throat chakras, on how we can speak and communicate with other people, like that's huge. You know, I feel like taking control over our health is the first step to revolutionizing is that personal accountability of what are you doing in your actual life besides waiting on other people to do stuff. Right. No, that's that's real. And um, I think we've had the time to really reassess now. Right. Absolutely. Right. Uh, before we were living such a fast paced life. It was so fast paced. It was so in the rat race. It was so um, unintentional, I would say, mm. that now co- once we've been coveted, you feel me? Like <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the word for me, though. The coveted. It's the word for me. It's coveted. We got coveted. And like now COVID has allowed us to like just, you know, ironically breathe right. <laughs> you know I me mean? like and just really reassess and think about our health because it scared the shit out of a lot of people yeah. you know what i mean so um i, I applaud you yeah. for that keep bringing uh to the real vegan plant-based life pre keep bringing uh light to that um i was 403 pounds once before wow and i went plant-based to lose it and i lost like a hundred over 150 pounds in like less than six months. That's amazing. By, that like amazing. being real plant based, just like raw. whole foods. Yeah, whole raw. Vegetables, yeah, I wasn't cooking raw, nothing. Sun yeah, cooked foods. Yep. People be thinking that you know what I'm saying like we talk about fast food. What's faster than fruits and vegetables? What's faster than picking it's up already apple cooked. eating it? That's true. But the it, sun cooked it right yeah. there for you. And we're so used to see people like, I, excuse me. What I've noticed is that. We're used to that full feeling, that salt water that everything mm-hmm. is in. Like you want to feel the itis, right? You want right. to you want to pass out and go to sleep after and eating. That's but not that's good. that's you how you're feel, raised. You that's like feel, all you that's, know. That's all you know. You yeah. just yeah. But you our, should you feel energized. Food. You know what I'm saying? Food is like people to ask me, like, is breakfast the most important meal of the day? Yes, it is, but not the way that we see it. Breaking fast is the most important meal of the day, but how you break okay, fast. Break down that word then. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Break down breakfast then. You, you know what I'm saying? We're breaking fast essentially, yeah. and, and to do that, I feel like breaking fast needs to happen with prayer, with gratitude, mm. with water. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like water is essential. Mm-hmm. You know, key limes to break down those toxins and start the metabolism. Mm. Fresh fruit and vegetable to get your complex carbohydrates and sugar for that energy. Mm, you said Vers- the book coming out when? Right, I need the audio <laughs> I book, need the too. book When is the book coming out again? Just because I don't have time to read it. I, I didn't even audio. go lie. At first I was like, mm, your book is coming out later. But now I know what you're talking about. You right. know what you're talking about. Now I'm pumped. <laughs> when yeah. is it coming out again? You know, uh, I'm working on it. Work on it. <laughs> you know, because no I rush. like to say the book is writing me, honestly. Mm. The book is writing me and I think I have to I have to live in that because I've been pushing myself so much to like get this information out get it out but i have to realize that certain things i still have to experience and i still have to be a student of life you know that's everything that's everything oh bj I'm not gonna have you just What's sitting there looking all cute. Because you look, no. you're looking, you're you're looking all cute. Like, I'm not gonna do that because you're looking cute. <laughs> I, I'm loving this shirt. I Thank love you. this, this shirt. This is literally me in print. Yes. Colors. Literally, yeah. I'm yeah. living for the right. space in between. I'm living right. for the little cleavage. The right chest. Here. I'm, I'm yes. all about the blue bench. Yes. <laughs> I'm loving that. I'm loving Thank it. Thank you. How are you doing today? Yo, this week has been just such a blessing to be like black and queer in that space and just feel like you're seen. Yeah. Like, I have been so blessed when it comes to just like film and television, along with Quirious. Um, I have a television show out right now on a streaming network called Urban Flix TV. Called I Casting love Urban Flix. So you should check out my show, Casting okay. the Net. I'm it's check amazing. Casting the Net. Yeah. Casting the Net. Um, and I'm working with some of the best black actors we've ever grew up with. Um, yeah. Ella Joyce from Set It Off. What? Um, yes. Uh, yes, Willard Pugh from, he played Harpo in The Color Purple. Like, I'm yes. working with Titans. You working with Harpo? I'm working you with be- Harpo. So it's, I'm just like You're so blessed. Harpo? Harpo. So Yo, check out our show. Check Come out on. our show um, on Urban Flix TV, Casting the Casting Net. Casting the Net. Um, I just booked two other things this week. So yes. I'm going to, I'm filming a commercial next week. I'm also filming a, a film next weekend. Um, I had a all female production crew reach out to me, um, and they're pitching their own stories to Netflix, and uh, they got a meeting with uh, Spike Lee, and, wow. I'm just like, and they asked me to direct one of the projects. So I'm gonna have my own yeah. directorial. Wow! Yeah. Congratulations! I want to direct. It. I'm right. so, so happy I'm just for you. Blessed, highly favored, Yo. and very queer. And I'm just glad, like the universe and God is looking out for me, and I'm just. 
That's what's up. That's amazing. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. I received and that. And can we wait one time for the shout out? Because he always plugs us with the castings. <laughs> wow, that's what's and up. And because of him, a couple of us have actually gotten casted for a couple different opportunities. Thank I'm you. in the works um, for a, a commercial Go in the moment off. as we're speaking. That's what's up. But because of you, because you introduced us to some cool people, and that's that connection. And that's something I was talking about the other day. Is like, Yo, like money is a very low vibration, okay? Super low. Like networks and the people you know and the com the relationships you build can get you into rooms and community. conversations that it's money can't community. buy you into. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I couldn't have got that without just having this communication. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's pretty dope. That's what's up. I, you, you know, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling. I'm feeling the love. I'm feeling the vibrations. That's what's up. And you got the face too. You got that. You got that. You got the face. You got that. Like, no, I love that. Like, thank that, you. I received that. That teddy bear black know. face. So you got that face. I love it. All love. Yeah, all you got love. that. All love, all the time face. <laughs> um. So, and it's quite, that, that's one question I did have. Like, how are you still able? Uh, we'll go here first, and then how are you still able to work during, uh, you know, COVID and. I have, I'm so blessed and fortunate to have representation. So I have an agent and I also have oh, a so manager. Oh, so you home and then it just comes. So I'm, <laughs> I'm just chilling and the auditions cross my laptop and then I make them happen. But also just from taking classes, I've met people who are now in casting. And that's how I was able to transfer it to my castmates. Wow. So it's all about community and making good impressions and being your most genuine self and not doing anything fake. And then it really yeah. lasts with people. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate the the cast and crew of Queries, because everyone's so genuine. It's, yeah. Uh, uh, it's that's everything. Well, that's great. <laughs> How are you able to still navigate during uh, Honestly, quarantine? Honestly, where there's a will, there's a way. Okay. You feel me? That you part. have to, I feel like in this life, you have to be adaptable. And that doesn't mean succumb right. to what is going on. But it does mean accept what is here right now, being in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I think in the moment, this is our current reality. This is the dimension that we live in. So learning how to navigate that is just another lesson for ourselves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I use that as a lesson to say, okay, well, now who do I get to be because of this? Right. You know what I'm saying? I love um, who I get to be. Right yeah, now. right? And I'm saying, like, I love, I love it. it here. I love, I love it. it here. Honestly, like, I feel like this has given me a chance to, like, slow down, to connect more with myself. Yeah. Um, even above anyone else, I feel like I was so just go, 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 go. Mm. And now I was able to face a lot of different things I haven't had to face in a long time. Mm. You know, like, my thoughts of just aloneness mm. and relationships mm. and family. You single? And, Okay. I'm single, that, that, yeah, 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 single. Yeah. I'm single. Somebody, I'm single. <laughs> somebody watching right now that you're going to text after the show. Uh oh. I'm a texture. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we go, go ahead. Okay, okay, that. okay. Um, I love that. Funny quarantine and chill stories. Quarantine and chill Any. stories. Oh, I got one for sure. All right, go ahead. Bust it out. It's definitely not a quarantine and chill, but it is, like, uh, to attest to, like, so I've been making it a point to get up and see the sunrise, and mm -hmm. I just oh. bought a new husky puppy, so in me mm -hmm. buying a new husky puppy, or not buying, I acquired one. I did mm -hmm. not pay for him. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I acquired a new husky puppy, and... He has a lot of energy. Yeah. And fur. And fur. <laughs> and he's very vocal. And Huskies, I did not realize, like, this put me in an elite fucking group of people. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> like, having a Husky is being in a club. Yeah. Okay? So I go on hikes all the time. I take him on hikes to get his energy out early in the morning before it gets hot. We go to Runyon Canyon. Let me tell you. You know Highland and Hollywood. Mm -hmm. When you get mm -hmm. off, you know how busy Highland and Hollywood is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm driving in the car. My job had a good ass morning. Woke up, saged my house, <laughs> right. made my bed, did my shit. Well, you know, I was in my zone. <laughs> right. Get on the freeway, whipping, right. listening to my music. Just smoked me a little doobie. Hey, you know, right, I'm, right. I'm gonna hike. You know, just smoke a little Right, song. yeah. You feel me? Got the window down. I'm parked. Hollywood and Highland. Not parked, but just yeah. in, in but with, park. the, with right. the foot on the brake. Right. And I'm just chilling. I turn around, tell me why this nigga hopped out the window. No. Uh, on the passenger side? Because. Shelly Shell. He hopped out. <laughs> he had to, it, that's why like some passenger activities. <laughs> the backseat passenger hopped bad. out the window. He didn't even get shot. On Highland House. <laughs> I turn around, of course, there's a white woman behind me watching me, and I'm just like, she's like, Okay. And I'm like, it's not okay. You're gonna tell everyone about this. I know, you're like, oh. And I'm over here frazzled trying to get my seatbelt off like this nigga just hopped up. Right, right. Oh my god. He, I get out the car, what he doing? Drinking water on the sidewalk. 
I'm telling you, my heart just about jumped out of my body, okay? <laughs> he wasn't even... I was like, if I lose this fucking husky... <laughs> Yo. That's only one corny chill story. I went to Joshua Tree just a couple weeks ago, and he was good all day off the leash. Just good. Just right, chilling. Right, right. Being the cutest little sweetest <laughs> little boy. <laughs> he wait till the goddamn sun go down, and he can't see shit to run off. Oh, my and God. And I'm sitting here looking for him for 20 minutes, trying not to freak out. Right. All of a sudden, he just come running back. I was like, it's like what? having a kid. It's definitely. It is it, like having a kid. It is. God, it's damn. stressful. It's, <laughs> it's stressful. I was like, what? Well, and I took both my dogs to the dog beach one day during quarantine. I was out there like, oh no, y'all do this with kids and dogs? Hell. Hell. Yeah. Hilarious. I love it. I was like, nah. Quarantine chill stories. I am spoken for, so I also don't have quarantine chill stories. But my okay. my dog is a hot okay, mess. Okay, well. no, no. spoken for. Wait, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, right. Okay, so okay. no I'm gentleman for. callers your I way. A, listen, well, no. no, child, the DMs are still messy. But listen, what I'm, <laughs> the DMs are still. Messy. Well, what I'm saying, they listen, don't care. They don't care. You still have a quarantine chill story because also for all these spoken for relationships, how are y'all holding up with mm. all the time that you are spending with this? <laughs> with this person like where you had so much time away from now it's every day all day all the time my man is at work oh <laughs> period she is blessed she gets her free time what i can just pop my legs period. up and be like i don't what? gotta worry about somebody coming and just dropping their penis on me like i'm not sometimes i'm just tired i don't yeah, want it on yeah, me i know <laughs> like, dang, can i just breathe yeah, up i here? mean like i feel bad because i know like my sex drive when i'm in a relationship like my sex drive is super high oh so you I, just want it all the time I him do, too he's and latino I'm, too so they're passionate oh, yeah. and i'm just like yo yeah. Give me a minute to breathe. Right. Well, if anybody needs a plug, get you a little macaroon. You know what I'm saying? Helps the, the, the testosterone and the libido for the women's. Okay. What happened? What you got? Macaroon. A macaroon? Yeah, macaroon powder. Yes. Yeah. Helps the, the libido and the testosterone. How do I bring it down? So I could, I could, <laughs> so I could, give like, him, if give I could. some chamomile and some lavender. Oh, wait, wait. So if I sprinkle it in her food, in her dinner. Put it in her coffee. In her coffee, and oh. then she'll be ready by it's dinner. It's like, it gives you like a little, like a nutty, uh, chocolatey flavor. Yeah, it will. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> nutty and chocolatey. <laughs> nutty and chocolatey. So, so I got a funny, me. I got a funny quarantine and chill story. So, um, <laughs> this was like FaceTime, more like FaceTime quarantine and chill, right? Ooh. So, um. I had it all set up, like, you know, candles in the back. Like, I'm oh. drinking wine, she's drinking wine. We, like, FaceTime, and I'm like, yeah, you know, this could be yours if we didn't have COVID, you know. So, um, COVID. We, right, if we wasn't COVID. <laughs> now, at the time I was living at Nene's, y'all remember Nene? And <laughs> Nene was like a grandmother figure, but that didn't work out. I went there to help her, and she ended up flipping on me. But anyway, so I'm in there in my room, and I'm talking to this this young lady on FaceTime, and we having a good time. We like, you know, getting to know each other. Like, hi, now you look good in that filter. Oh, I know me too. So, Nene flips out on the other side of the door, starts slamming the door, and like calling me out my name. I'm on the FaceTime, and she's like, she's young, so she was wasn't even phased, right? You <laughs> know, she was like, she's like, ooh, toxic shit, love it, right? Oh, like, oh my that's God. crazy. Show me more. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> like, was that a plate by your head? Like, are you okay? <laughs> right? So. <laughs> I'm basically getting kicked out, thrown out, while I'm on a FaceTime date with somebody. Oh, Yo. Man. Hilarious. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So, are you still talking to this young lady? Right, what's the tea? What's the tea on the oh, young lady? Oh, we're doing that. That's what we're doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Moving to a commercial break. It turned Wendy Williams real quick. <laughs> right. We're like, so messed up. Me? We're like, you want to know what Kevin is doing? <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? No, um, yeah, we're still, doing? we're still talking to this day. Oh, good. Um, but hilarious. Okay. That was a funny. Well, quarantine. I'm glad we are all finding ways to mingle and meet new people during quarantine. I will say that for the larger part of quarantine, that was a big struggle for me is like figuring out being a single woman. I was like, damn, like what does dating yeah. look like mm. now? You know, it was already hard before being in person, not having anything in person. It was like, fuck, like how am I going to find? Luckily, you know, Instagram came through for you, girl. You yeah. The DMs. <laughs> Or the, they they go down and who said that shit? It went down in the DMs. It go down in the DMs. It go down in the DMs. I don't know who said it, but he was on something. Who was that? He was on something. Who was that? I know the Chloe and Hallie uh, 
when they did the cover, they on, did the, on, cover. Their, on their channel. Yeah. But I forgot who it was. That's who's that? Oh, they're amazing. Who on here now? Who, 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 who's, it who's goes down? Who sing the down in the DMs? That? It goes down in the DMs. It goes down right. in the DMs. It goes down. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> Thank you, Potus. That's Somebody why she got records and stuff on her wall because Potus be knowing. Right. Um, <laughs> don't short yourself. You, you be knowing too. You searched it. You searched that it. Was you. That, <laughs> you, was, that you, was your bro. search. Um, so yeah, we have Lex. Oh, yo, got it. Thanks, Normie. We got Lex on um, Skype, right, Potus? It's our boss. Let's bring. The, <laughs> let's bring the creator, the writer, the director. Lex got creds like uh, Tyler Perry. Lex, you look so What's up, y'all? Hi, look at your skin. Good oh, my morning. gosh. What's up, Y'all, don't do that. Don't do that. You look so good. <laughs> Welcome, I just Lex. ordered the Rihanna skincare, so I'm not excited. Oh, oh okay, Fenty skin. Come on, you know what I mean? I had to come on board. Support a sister. <laughs> How you feeling today, Lex? Man, honestly, listening to this conversation, y'all have me rolling over here. My day has been blessed. I've been babysitting. I've been putting kids to nap, cooking, cleaning. Yeah. Dang, well, y'all funny. I'm over here cracking up. That's what's up, man. Dang, Kwame turned housewife on us real quick. I know, Kwame. <laughs> Look, don't get it confused, you know. Y'all be thinking I'm Kwame, but, you know. You way more. I'm, I'm good material right here. Right, right. You, you, you're not, your Kwame days are behind you. They are. They are. Long. Yeah. You process that toxic. Rest, right. rest yes. that soul. Yes, yes. That's what I'm talking about. Well, thank you so much. I, I'm honored that you would give me um, the chance to talk about your recap and talk about the last um, episode of the season. Um, so thank you for yes. that. And um, congratulations on your success of Curious TV. We have over 54,000 views on YouTube. Wow. How do you Look feel at about that. that? Uh, over, 30, off, over 33,000 subscribers. Like, Look at that. Uh, with like little or no effort. Like, how do you feel right now? <laughs> Bro, I feel so blessed. Like, I can't even, I can't even express because this was like a passion project. Yeah. Just something I was like, yo, I want to be a writer, director. Let me just throw some shit out there. But everybody who's been on board has just kind of made this, you know, process like easy, to be honest. Right. That's what's up. I love it. That's what, are you yes. happy with your end product? Have you watched it? I, I watched it today. Uh, uh, plug too. It's on Amazon Prime in case y'all didn't understand. Right. It. You, yeah, we on Amazon you feel Prime. It's y'all. Also, <laughs> on Amazon Prime. So you can watch it on YouTube or you can go binge it on Amazon Prime. I did that today and it was a better feel. Like, opposed to like, you know, when you were first putting it out, I told you this earlier, mm-hmm. like it was so sporadic. The, the yeah. episodes in between, I was losing that feeling with the the characters and that development. But when I binged it today, I was like, okay, this was cohesive. <laughs> and this was, this was, how do you feel about it when you go back and look at it? Um, damn, I didn't watch that things over and over so many times. Um, I'm a critique of my own work. So I'm going to say that first and foremost, but to be honest, like I'm writing season two, I'm almost done with season two. So me going back, like I keep, there's little things that are, that are said that I want to, you know, pinpoint and kind of go a little further on. Um, but just watching, I just see like the progress, yo, it's like everyone literally steps up from episode to episode to episode to episode. No facts. It was, it was definitely a development, uh, going on, especially from the mm-hmm. first episode when we were at black house and I saw the first episode come up, I was like, this I love this. I love this concept. I love the icons. I love the visuals. It was all great, right? And I was like, um, we gonna uh, <laughs> we're just acting. <laughs> and then the very next was, episode. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. It was my ponytail for me. If y'all watch episode one, you know what they. I told you, Cole. About. No, the the the, <laughs> the acting. I'm trying to tell her. She one, said no. To episode two. It's like two different, two different shows. Two different yeah. shows. It's like two different. It's like everybody took a, a class and came back and was like, you know what, let me get my life together. And you could just see that <laughs> over every episode. Then the, you could see people being more invested into your dream and yeah. more invested into the show. And then by the, I would say, by the fifth episode is where I really started to feel the characters. Oh. Like when I started oh, to see, great. you know, the family and the and the stories, the, the backstories, and, and these characters having depth. So, you know, what, what, what can we expect, right, <laughs> different from season two? 
Um, different. All right. Well, seasons two is gonna have a lot more structure. Um, there's a you know, it was a, it was hard putting the episodes out, getting them edited, getting people to come. You know, everyone just you know volunteered their time. So it was we're we're dealing with ten, twelve different schedules. So it was very hard to record and having to re-record stuff. So season two is definitely going to have much more structure. Um, the releases are going to be set in stone um, and they're going to be pretty much, that's it. Like we're not going to kind of go around that right now. You know, season one has been a lot of figuring things out. And I think that everyone on board has, you know, figured it out. So, you know, that's pretty much going to be the main difference, but everything else is going to be, it's just going to be a completely like evolving. I don't want, I want content, uh, queries to just continue like going up. So, yeah, it's, it has no, it has no, uh, I don't really think there's any other way it could go, but up. right. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. I don't really think it could go anywhere else, but up. Um, so you said you wanted it when you, when you first created it, we had that first interview here, me and you. You said you wanted it to be something that uh, the community related to. When you look right. at your body of work, do you feel like it reflects the community? Honestly, I feel like it reflects us greatly. Um, I get a lot of DMs. Like, y'all DMs be full, you know, of, you know, <laughs> prospects and people in. <laughs> I should just be like, yo, thank you. I'd be like, dang, can I get a little something? Like, right, right, right. <laughs> but, um, no, nah, I feel like I've been it's showing us in a different light. It's not showing us in all these stereotypes that we keep getting casted in. Like we're barely on TV. And when we are on TV, it's just stuff that's like, that's not us. Yeah. Right. That does like, we can't relate to that. Yeah. Um, so for me, you know, queries was very much, you know, to be relatable to do, you know, stuff that people go through, maybe your friends and not necessarily you, but people around you have gone through. Um, and it not have to be like the gay drama. Yeah, yeah, no. I appreciated that too. Like the drama, well, I wouldn't even call it drama, but the the scenarios were, um, I think, a, a good, you know, example of real life. Right. I think Lex did a great job at showing that a black queer life is not a monolithic experience. Mm -hmm. Like it shows that we are just as complicated as all the hetero stories we've seen before us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. What I really love is that um, I think as queer people, um, we had to fight to feel comfortable for so long. So having a queer person at the head of the table also created a really comfortable experience. So mm -hmm. on set, like you saw the uh, the stories improved and got better. Yeah. We, everyone got more comfortable. Yeah. And connected. Yeah. And I agree. that has a lot to do with Lex yeah. and putting this all together so thank and you and i appreciate that's that bj right there right so uh they play bryson on the show and um wait am i saying too much no because no, you played you you were the on very last, last episode, episode. okay very last episode bryson we're introduced to bryson and we find out that you're the f father right bryson is bisexual bisexual and i love that i because, love that too all right and because it's like that's something and your partner accepts it mm -hmm. is that's not really something that um that fluidity especially masculine is exactly. not exactly accepted at all you don't get to see that yeah and mm -hmm. then it's like you see um that like, you're actively having sex with, like i don't know i just that blew my mind to, and you added a whole new element. See, y'all didn't get to see the last. I got to see the last. Season. <laughs> the last <episode. laughs> but you brought a whole new element. It was almost like a whole nother show for the finale. Wow. I was like, yo, because, you know. That's powerful. Yeah, wow. it was. It's like a whole. And so now that made me super excited for season two, because I feel like. I mean, the evolution is just going to continue. I'm so excited. I'm so excited and to see. And then it's crazy to watch us because, like, not only do we get to evolve individually as actors and actresses, but we also get to evolve as couples within, mm. you know what I'm saying, like, our comfortability yeah. within our couple that's relationship. Let's evolve. talk about it. Let's that talk about so it. Uh, actually, let's talk about it, Cole, because... <laughs> The power couple. Your relationship, <laughs> right, evolved quite nicely. Um, there's memes quite all nicely. type of shit about you. Is yours. there memes? Do we have memes? Y'all got memes. Yo, y'all are. Everyone keeps saying that, but I have not seen any I'm memes. I'm going to watch. I'm going to go back. It was on, like, my popular page. It was a meme with a video meme, actually, like me and then somebody's daughter. 
and it was that meme, and then it was another Okay. Meme. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute, is this Aquarius? Yo, <laughs> like, Sam and Bisa are it. Yo. I want to be in that relationship. Bisa is it, okay? <laughs> Sam is an extra I want to be a thruple in that. They make me so Yo, happy. when I tell you Bisa is sought after, I get to, DMs about Bisa. trying to get rid of me to get to her. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's hilarious. Did you feel, was that, um, was that all acting? Yeah, it all was. Of, just all so, of it was. surprisingly, everyone asks us all the time, but me and Rex, I mean, we're cool, obviously, like, we're friends, but we have no sexual relations, we've never talked, wow. we don't talk. Before our sex scene, we actually, that's the first time we ever had lunch together, and we sat and had lunch, so that way we could talk about, like, what each other would be comfortable with. Wow. I love that, by the Speaking way. That was, like, scene. they both told me that they were meeting up to, um, just to talk about comfort levels, and I was over here, like... <laughs> okay. Because I okay. think that was the scene. That, I think that's the first time like we actually like kissed. Mm. I saw a lot of touching though. You was like really. <laughs> he was here with it the whole like hey. Said, you know, I they were touching, I biting, biting I licking. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw like even when you proposed. Oh. Uh, another wait. Um, oh. is that a song? <laughs> um, so, you're yeah, you're good. You're good. This is gonna air after. To the sex scene. Oh, it's the, sex the sex scene. scene. Sex the scene lighting was. on the sex scene. That red? Jess killed that. Jess Yo. Did, and shout out to Kim. <laughs> because, okay, so can we talk about it for a second? Because I feel like I feel like because people only watch it on YouTube, they don't really understand some of the depths and lengths we went through for some of these shots. Like, people think that we Man. had this huge... Yeah, people think we had, like, this huge budget right. or, like, all this stuff. And I remember one time we were, like, literally in Miko's house and we had to, like, makeshift the fucking, like, light. And then the whole sex scene was shot in my room. Wow. POTUS, can we start the sex scene at one minute? Because I've watched it a gang of times. Is it really I believe play? it's one minute and 20. Because it's, like, so three, three minutes. Yeah, I got to see it. Like, yeah, check it out one, one Because they were doing a lot of looking at each other. I was like, yeah, skip all that. Let's get to we the point. That's that the sexual. best part. We're looking the best part. Sexual. Skip all that. Let's get to the when the when the robe start coming off. Huh? Yeah, play it now. I'm so excited. Roll yeah. the clip. Roll the clip. Roll the where the Lex, music comes from. Where did you, you find really the music? That. A lot of this music is, I haven't heard it before and I love it. Yeah, so all of the music, it's actually by queer artists that I found online on Instagram. So what I did was um, like just start with Jovi who does the intro song. Um, I've known Jovi since she was about 15 maybe. I was playing college basketball with her sister and um, I knew she started doing music. I recruited her to play basketball. I ended up leaving, you know, get graduating, and she was doing music. So I was like, yo, send me a song. 
And that's how I really started was with Jovi. Wow. Um, and I was like, you know what? I heard her heard a song on um, SoundCloud, and I was like, yo, I'm a, I want to use this. And she was like, go ahead, you know. So she's been sending me music, and then I just kind of opened it up to other people. But it's literally all queer artists. Wow, that's, that's lit. So let's let's talk about this this scene real quick, Cole. My favorite scene, man. <laughs> that's your favorite scene. It's my favorite scene. So you was was you hyped when you was writing it? Like, yo, this about to be. I might have. To so let I'm gonna tell you. Um, I actually did not write any sex scenes in Queerious. Okay. So what happened was I heard the song um, and I was like, yo, I need to do a scene to this song. And I thought the perfect um, the perfect uh, characters to do it was Sam and Bisa. You know, they were on and counting um, and their new little relationship. So I heard the song and I was like, no, nah, I need to make a scene for it. And it was just such like a beautiful like song. And I also wanted to portray a beautiful love making session, not just two lesbians just going at it which is like you know very sought after right. um, so it's very very intentional no yeah it felt it felt intentional <laughs> cole uh <laughs> you know if, yeah it did it did um cole you said you were actually um celibate at the time yes and you were able to get more in tune with yourself even though this was a very sexy scene yes um, um what did you learn about intimacy I learned that intimacy goes way beyond sex and that you can have that same feeling without ever touching a person or being sexual with them if you really open yourself up to the intimacy and like actually just being in a space mm -hmm. with someone and like connecting to that person. Um, it kind of made me realize that a lot of the times that I've had sex with people was very selfish. It was very just me, you know, like kind of just doing a thing. Um, versus being in a situation where you're actually trying to connect with a person and exchange energy and share that same chemistry and share that time and space together. No, that's right. Um, that's a real thing. That's totally Absolutely. different. Right. That's totally different. <clears throat> um, so I have a question about queries, right? Like, I, I don't think, I don't know if you all could have imagined it to be the successful um, as successful okay. as it is, what impact, what surprise impact did Curious have on you? Let's start with you, BJ. Uh, I think one is just opening up doors that I think a lot of queer artists didn't even imagine for themselves. It's no longer like just making us supporting characters. It's literally putting us at the forefront. Yeah. So that, for me, is the biggest thing and the fact that we're all black doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, whoa. Right. Whoa. Like, we, uh, it's, I feel like a lot of black people, queer people come from communities where you were supposed to hide that part of yourself. Yeah. And now that we're just out in the forefront and we're not the side story, we're the entire story. Yeah. Period. That's, that's the impact. That's big in, uh, in the acting. In acting. That's, that's really big. And we're paving a way for the next generation. I yeah. think, I, I love Gen Z. I love yeah. Gen Z. I love how fluid they already are in accepting themselves. And yeah. this, this is the path we need to continue. Yeah. Like, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Cole? What surprise impact did Queries have on you? Um, honestly, it was just surprising to see how many people related to it and were excited to just see the stories of us being regular people. <laughs> like, you know, because we're often, like, oftentimes when you see us on film and script, it is very sexualized. Um, it's very sexualized, like, over-sexualized. Like, the only thing that I ever see about us is sex or how do we have sex or, you know, us having sex. And I think it was really cool for people to see that, like, we do have lives outside of that. We have jobs, we have families, we have things that we've been through, things yeah. that we're going through. I think that's very powerful because so many people, when I was working at the cafe, I was working at... Um, a cannabis cafe right before the whole pandemic started now we get so many people that came in there because it was the only one in america so i would get people from all over the world that came in and a couple of them were lesbians who've actually watched queerious and it was just exciting to see them so excited like yeah. wow I, the person that represented us is like here in right the flesh here. and yeah. i was like it's crazy that's dope. and that's how dope. inclusive how inclusive queerious is right. you have trans masculine you have lesbian you have bisexual you have gay like it's everything. It's queer. And all then of I it. think my favorite story of Queerious is the story of um, Jazz. Is mm -hmm. the story of Jazz. It's For so the simple fact that we don't always get to see the side of the feminine who is 
also going through the transition with the with the trans. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? We don't always get to see how that triggers them, you know? And and Jazz, we got to see like her question herself, like, am I straight or am I gay? Because you are now male and I can still love you, so can I like men? You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like these are very valid questions that we kind of ostracize or try not to ask because I feel like we kind of get stuck in this, I have to be one way. Right, we yeah. get comfortable with the labels. No, we yeah, the labels. We give ourselves labels we and we put ourselves performing in performing those labels. Like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know? uh, Lux, what was the surprise impact that Query has had on you? Um, honestly, the support and how many people reach out and kind of like share their stories. Um, one in particular, there's this grandmother um, and she was telling me she has like, a, I think, two uh, queer grandchildren. So she watches the show and she just says like it's another conversation started where she's able to like either know some things and able to say it to her grandkids or even ask them like, hey, I'm watching the show. What is this? So. To me, that was pretty dope. It's like, it's, you know, there's a lot of straight people that watch it, obviously queer. Um, and just to see the support from everyone, it's like, I mean, I thought like, these are just my, I wrote down my thoughts and I made scenes based upon conversations I've had with myself and with other people. So to just to see like the support is like, dang, like I used to think I was like a weird thinker. I was like, yo, I, my mind is like, you know, all over the place, but it's, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's been a blessing and I'm very, very, very thankful. And I want to talk, go back to your point about it being so inclusive. Uh, BJ's storyline surprised me. It <laughs> me really too. did. It surprised me. <laughs> how how important was was it for you to have BJ's storyline uh, story or narrative um, in Quirious? It was extremely important because the thing is, is when we see um, a, a black male on TV and they're gay, it's just that. They, if they've ever been with a man, they're just gay. They're like black men are not allowed to be bisexual. That's it doesn't. True. It's where we don't so ever true. see that. Um, so for me, it was like that was my point of like, no, he identifies as a bisexual man. You know, even if he has a boyfriend. So yeah. you know, that's what I wanted to write in because I, I really wanted to write in the other side. Like everything is kind of the other side of of um, of what we normally see. Yeah, I'm excited for you to go deeper into these stories because um, they they were very. You only scratched the surface. And so, you know what I mean? It was really a, a yeah. also question. Will the episodes be longer? I got that question. Um, <laughs> will the episodes be longer? That's not that was that's that's what the people want to know. That wasn't <laughs> that. OK, I get that question a lot. Um, I we're working on making them longer. A big factor is the budget. And it is very hard. Episodes, what's the cash app? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Queerious TV, all right? We on Patreon. There you go. Um, it's If you guys want longer episodes, more episodes, all that stuff, like, it's really, it's a community effort. You know, we don't we don't have a budget. We did season one. And we are COVIDed, y'all. We Some COVID. people we COVID. got jobs. You feel me? Okay. You know, yeah, unemployment is iffy. <laughs> slow Listen, down on us folks. Slow down. It's, it's you know, and but I, I do like, like, I really do appreciate that the community has been stepping up and like, you know, we go on live on YouTube and there's donations and support and stuff like that. Like I really, really love that. And I actually, I actually really do like that. It is self-funded yeah. um, because there's nobody else's voice involved. It's ours. And I don't want to um, like, I don't want to be ever offered, you know, a check and me be like, mm, no, cause that's not the vision. You know, I like, I just like it the way it is. I like having complete um, control over the creativity um, but yeah, I mean, we we get into a little bit more of our budget, you know. We can give y'all thirty minutes. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and then I did see a theme of like suicide awareness um, in a couple episodes. Um, why why did you have that in there? I wrote that in purposely um, because I feel like it's a space that we tend to not talk about, especially as the in the black community. Um, whether someone mentions something about suicide or a suicide attempt, um, it's just not talked about. And um, I feel like they're very, very quick to like change the subject or like, no, no, it's okay. You're, you're fine. You're, mm, you're fine. But it's really in reality, it's like, these are things, especially in our community that, you know, people think long and hard. Um, and you know, it's crazy. It's like these rappers, like now the newer rappers, the younger ones, they always talk about, the depression and suicide and a lot of the older older rappers are like you know they're not about that or whatever the case may be but in reality like 
like um, BJ said, like this generation is they're loud and they're they're willing to talk about stuff that we don't want to talk about. We haven't been talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, it was it was interesting for me too because <clears throat> I feel like we really don't know what to do if we're faced with that situation. We're ill-equipped because mm-hmm. we've been sweeping this subject under the emotional rug. Mm-hmm. We're ill-equipped. If somebody, and I've run into this a couple times um, with friends um, either being suicidal for attention or being seriously suicidal, and I didn't really know how to approach the situation. I was just kind of like, I want to be, I want to hold space and be present for you, but I don't know what to say. I I don't know how not to be dismissive. I don't know how to just listen. I don't know how, you know what I'm saying? To talk somebody off the ledge. Um, Did you do any research? Um, Because I saw that you put um, like a hotline for like three different episodes. Yeah, I I want to use my platform to give, to, to gear people of where to go. I'm not a coach. I'm not licensed for anything. Um, if it's a friend that I'm close to, or even someone on the street, I can offer my best help. But at the end of the day, like I also want to make sure that, you know, queers is getting a lot of attention and I want to make sure we're getting attention that can also help. You know, I'm not, we're not just about numbers and hitting a million views and all this and that. It's like, okay, there's real problems within our community. Where can we go to get the help? Mm-hmm. You, can you guys offer any, um, Anything for somebody who might be going through that, or you have any? I Can know I, there's the Noah. Mental, I was gonna say mental health is uh, such a like. Str- it, it's be, like you said, we we're ill-equipped and we sweep it under the rug and we make it such a hard topic. But at the end of the day, we're all people, and if you just need someone to connect to, do that. Like, just have someone to speak to. But also, mm-hmm. if you're, because I'm often, I know I've always been on the other end of receiving it. And sometimes some people aren't like strong enough to handle hearing a bunch of bad news and can't c- contain that energy. Also, know it's okay to take care of yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that's also important. Yeah. Because then you're also putting your own mental health at risk. Yeah. So that's yeah. really the only best advice I can offer. And I know the Trevor's Project has a 24-hour hotline. Um, it's just 1-800 Trevor's Project, I believe, or uh, you can Google Trevor Trevor's Project dot org. Um, they have a 24-hour hotline as well. Um, okay. I had, I used to have like my DMs open when I first started Let's Talk, and then I started getting DMs, and I was like, actually, <laughs> I, I can't help you. <laughs> I thought I could, a listening ear is not enough. Like, right. it's not enough. It's, this is a serious thing that has to be um, professionally dealt with, or at least yeah. intentionally dealt with, you know what I mean? Um, so thank yep. you for bringing a, awareness to that as well. Uh what are you most excited about for the next season, Cole? I'm excited about my relationship. <laughs> I'm excited about my relationship for the next season. Um, I think that it's going to be exciting to see how Sam and Bisa explore this relationship, especially because they bring so many different aspects to the table and how we all say we want a relationship to operate, and we actually get to see that exemplified, like, from the beginning steps in that open line of communication, um, from the going to see a a couple's therapist before problems even start to, like, unpack issues, you know, into moving into, like, relationships with, you know, friends that we may have and soulmates and all those things. I think that our relationship is really opening the floor for a lot of conversations that need to be had to stop this cycle of toxicity. Facts, because when y'all get that, uh, write down y'all intentions, and uh, listen. Everything. Listen, I was like, y'all, I'm doing that. I was like, that is so healthy. Like, I ain't never had somebody, what, is, what are your intentions? Here, write them down. That is so <laughs> healthy. <laughs> I need to have this. You know how parents used to do I need to have this for reference. So yeah. when you fuck up, I'm going to come and show because it to you. Like, you uh, told it's, me it's accountability. that this was your intention. You had said you wasn't going to do what you're doing right now. Right. <laughs> but no, that was I hold him accountable. That was, I love that. That was lit um right. what are you most excited about yo so coming from a fan perspective because i honestly don't know what season two looks like mm-hmm. i am personally curious what the hell bryson is going to do with the whole ass baby mm-hmm. jazz is going to do with their situation with their man i'm just like how does how do those two families blend yeah <laughs> with this one baby yeah i'm just like that is complicated I'm excited to see um, 
the support from your partner too. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because that that was an interesting reaction for me when um let me make sure this is the right season. No, you're not giving the right season right now. You finna give the wrong season. Oh, okay, because you know it's bad when you get to see the stuff and people haven't seen it. You finna get a wrong episode. I was like, <laughs> no, it was. No, it nah, was. that's the last one. It's the last one. It ended with a cliffhanger. We don't know what Chase how Chase feels. We don't know how Chase feels yet. No, okay, season episode eight, right? Mm-hmm. Episode eight. Right. When um yeah, y'all went out to eat, right? Our introduction, uh huh. Okay. And then you came home, right. and, they, and then it just goes black. We don't know. And then end scene. Yeah, yeah. end scene. They don't know yet what we happens after. Know. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, <laughs> listen, let me tell y'all what y'all can look forward to without me saying anything, because I want to say everything. I got to end this because I'm about to get a whole <laughs> the whole um, finale. Miko giving birth. Probably one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Love oh it. my god! Cannot wait for y'all to see that. Um, let me see. What else? Uh, just, you know what I really love? Uh, I really love just the, I don't know, the toge- I feel the cohesiveness in the whole show. Mm-hmm. And I think that was something that came together in the last episode. And if I, y'all, we need to, Lex, table this idea, but we need to do a, re, a reunion season so they, or a reunion show so they can actually know, like, how it started and what, how, yo. what, like, where we started from yeah. and where we all the way went to. No, it's a whole nother show. Like, you started with a brilliant idea and then it became a, a whole movement by the time. It blossomed. Yeah, it blossomed into a movement. So I, I'm so proud of y'all. Lex, what are you most excited about for season two? And Kwame... Oh, emotionally unavailable ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, season two, I'm really excited to, I have like way more confidence and I'm actually taking my time with this script because the first script I literally wrote in one night. Wow. So now I'm like, I'm making sure that I'm slowing myself down and getting the things that I, I feel like are important um, to get across. I'm very excited about that, but I'm also super, super, super excited of you guys to see why Kwame is the way she is. And I did that purposely where she's very mysterious in the first season. Just a fuck boy. Um, she wasn't mysterious. She was just a fuck boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but is she a fuck boy if she's honest about what she's doing? Yes, that don't That's, make you that less is, of a fuck boy. That is the question all fuck boys ask right. to make you think like, oh, I'm I feel like nah, just because, just I because you tell the that. truth. That's like just because you tell the truth does not make you exempt from consequences. Right? Okay. Or like, or don't. like, yeah, like you just because I be like, yeah, you I'm better about to drop slap, words. Right? I'm about to slap you. Right? I slap you. Does that make me not a fuck boy? I'm coming to your church. <laughs> All right, we ain't talking about getting the chain like, violent she, she now. She was giving you the fuckboy exactly. response right now, like, I guess. I so guess. Say it like that. If you want to think about it like that, fuckboy responses. Oh, my God. I'm, look, y'all going to see why Kwame is the way she is, and I feel like, you know, y'all have y'all be a little more sympathetic to the kid <laughs> and why the kid is honest That's with her just wanting to fuck whoever she wants to fuck. I don't know. Conway don't get no sympathy from me, but I am interested <laughs> <laughs> to see her unpack, right? I want to see that. So take your time. Yeah, so, that. yeah, season two, you'll you'll see Kwame unpack. You'll see the um, dynamic of the family, the new family. You'll see the, the relationship, Sam and Bisa. It's going to get um, more intentional than what it already is. I'm just going to say that. When is episode nine dropping? Tuesday. So I can start talking about it, because I done seen it four times today. And I, I need to tell somebody about it. So where is it dropping? We on we gonna drop on Tuesday. Uh, what's the date on I don't got my phone right now. What's the date on Tuesday? Okay. So season nine, uh finale dropping Tuesday. Tuesday. And that's gonna be dropping on YouTube and Amazon? That's gonna be exclusively on YouTube. That one will not be on Amazon. I think I like the deal you made with Amazon. That's I like that. <laughs> you did not get the season finale, Amazon. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that we we gonna we gonna keep that where we started. We gonna start it on YouTube, end it on YouTube. That's what's I up. That. I love that deal. I love that. So make sure y'all check it out. Curious TV on YouTube. Um, what what's your IG now? I am no. Are you Alexander? I am Alexander. my I oh, I am Alexander King. I am Alexander King, the creator, the director of uh Aquarius TV. Thank BJ, you, what's your you. uh IG? My IG is BJ Minor. Hey, 
Minor. Am I That's in cute. Keep it cute. That's cute. Cole, Cole, I am I. I. No, I changed it. Oh, okay. So my IG is just Cole Lawson but it's C O L E W A S O N. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much, Lex, for bringing us to us. Thank y'all so much for coming on the Thank show. You, Lex, Thank you for having us. us. Oh, man, that's yeah. right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate y'all so much. Uh, I'm gonna call you after this, Lex. I got you. Welcome back, man. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for bringing me back, Lex. Hey, Listen, yo, I, welcome I back. Give Congratulations. One, Three years, baby. You brought me back, man. I appreciate that. Oh, I love this. Proud of you, man. Proud of y'all. Um. Yeah, make sure y'all watch. Uh, I, I This was a very good show for me. Thank you. Um, it's been a long time for us to come back, and this was the right team to do it with great vibes. Uh, shout out to the community on this one. This is this is, this is is tribe building, what we're doing. So exactly. that's what's up. Um, I want to give a shout out also to, um, uh, who am I shouting out? Oh, to Dorky Nerd. Thank you, Dorky Nerd, for my shirt. And this is also, Lex, you still there? I'm still here. All right. Um, Lex got the Uncle Skeeter hat. I appreciate <laughs> you for uh, blessing me with this. I did not know who Uncle how Skeeter he, was. How he becoming cousin uncle, Skeeter, girl. Cousin, 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 cousin Skeeter. Cousin Skeeter. Look, I don't even know. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You're better than me. Yo, I'm I like do him. not know who this is. Like, I'm telling you. Everybody's You look, Cousin Skeeter was, was the move. Right. I did not know. You're the only one that I've ever seen merch on this, and people go crazy about this hat. So, appreciate you. Shout out to y'all for that one. Um, yeah, let's. All right. Well, you have a good night, and um, we query us on Tuesday. All right, y'all. Y'all. By the way, y'all looking real cute over there too. Peace up, A Town. I don't know. know. Y'all looking real cute. <laughs> see you later, Lex. All right. See y'all later. Bye. Oh, also, I have one more shout out to give. Um, shout out to. Ashley, Miss Wright, uh, she's starting a new skincare line. It's called um, Affirm, Affirm Skincare, Affirm the skin that you're in. Make sure y'all cop that. It should be live tomorrow. Um, best products on, in the world. She puts great emotional labor into everything, and this is going to be the product. Mm -hmm. So I love you, Ashley. Thank you so much. And make sure y'all check that out. Check out Quarius TV Tuesday, okay? Tuesday. Season nine. I'm so excited. The end of season one, y'all did a phenomenal. I mean, episode nine. Keep me in check, Cole. Keep me in check. Uh, <laughs> episode nine. Thank y'all so much for coming. Thank you, Thank BJ. You. Thank you for all your uh, congratulations on all your success Thank as well you. as you, you Cole. So I cannot wait to support you in that and support oh, my whole community. Down. If you smoke some weeds, I got some infused cannabis cooking oil. You know what, Cole? You you're flirting. Do you understand? <laughs> at, this point, at this point, it's flirtation. Like, okay. Oh my God. <laughs> no, thank y'all so much. Love y'all. You already know. I'm your girl Shelly Shell, and I love y'all for real. I'll see y'all next week. We doing this.